verses 19 to 21. We have here an account of the people's different sentiments concerning Christ, on occasion of the foregoing discourse, there was a division, a schism, among them, they differed in their opinions, which threw them into heats and parties. Such a ferment as this they had been in before, ch 743, 916, and where there has once been a division again. Rents are sooner made than made up or mended. This division was occasioned by the sayings of Christ, which, one would think, should rather have united them all in him as their center, but they set them at variance, as Christ foresaw, lu. 1251. But it is better that men should be divided about the doctrine of Christ than united in the service of sin, lu. 1121. See what the debate was in particular. I. Some upon this occasion spoke ill of Christ and of his sayings, either openly in the face of the assembly, for his enemies were very impudent, or privately among themselves. They said, He has a devil, and is mad, why do you hear him? 1. They reproach him as a demoniac. The worst of characters is put upon the best of men. He is a distracted man, he raves and is delirious, and no more to be heard than the rambles of a man in bedlam. Thus still, if a man preaches seriously and pressingly of another world, he shall be said to talk like an enthusiast, and his conduct shall be imputed to fancy, a heated brain, and a crazed imagination. 2. They ridicule his hearers, why hear you him? Why do you so far encourage him as to take notice of what he says? Note, Satan ruins many by putting them out of conceit with the word and ordinances, and representing it as a weak and silly thing to attend upon them. Men would not thus be laughed out of their necessary food, and yet suffer themselves to be laughed out of what is more necessary. Those that hear Christ, and mix faith with what they hear, will soon be able to give a good account why they hear him. 2. Others stood up in defense of him and his discourse, and, though the stream ran strong, dared to swim against it, and, though perhaps they did not believe on him as the Messiah, they could not bear to hear him thus abused. If they could say no more of him, this they would maintain, that he was a man in his wits, that he had not a devil, that he was neither senseless nor graceless. The absurd and most unreasonable reproaches, that have sometimes been cast upon Christ and his gospel, have excited those to appear for him and it who otherwise had no great affection to either. Two things they plead one. The excellency of his doctrine, these are not the words of him that hath a devil, they are not idle words, distracted men are not used to talk at this rate. These are not the words of one that is either violently possessed with the devil or voluntarily in league with the devil. Christianity, if it be not the true religion, is certainly the greatest cheat that ever was put upon the world, and, if so, it must be of the devil, who is the father of all lies, but it is certain that the doctrine of Christ is no doctrine of devils, for it is leveled directly against the devil's kingdom, and Satan is too subtle to be divided against himself. So much of holiness there is in the words of Christ that we may conclude they are not the words of one that has a devil, and therefore are the words of one that was sent of God, are not from hell, and therefore must be from heaven. 2. The power of his miracles, can a devil, that is, a man that has a devil, open the eyes of the blind? Neither madmen nor bad men can work miracles. Devils are not such lords of the power of nature as to be able to work such miracles, nor are they such friends to mankind as to be willing to work them if they were able. The devil will sooner put out men's eyes than open them. Therefore Jesus had not a devil, 